Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Oscar Kiewik. I'm a physician uh, and CEO of CardiCube. We are a digital health company creating voice AI driven interfaces for healthcare organizations, physicians, um, and patients. We're located in Seattle in the state of Washington in the US and also in Central Europe um, in Poland. I'm really so excited to join, join the conference today and to tell you more about how voice AI can uh, change the medical world and also change the way how we gather medical data from patients. So the topic for today is going to be voice AI for medical data collection. I'd be more than happy to answer to all of your questions uh, right after the presentation. Uh, but also, if you'd like to do it later on, you can shoot me an email to the address that is on the screen. As stated before, I'm the president of CardioCube Corporation and also shareholder of this company. To give you more background of our story, um, CardioCube is a physician-led organization. We are on a mission to make healthcare affordable and accessible through technology. We have two main services and products. We have the virtual care service and care management system, helping healthcare providers to stay connected with their patients, changing how individuals optimize the chronic diseases, that's our very core, and upgrading the standard of employer-sponsored health plans. Because if you're living in the US and you're working, then you mostly get your insurance through uh, your employer. Why have we even started this project? So uh, the primary problem we've noticed was the rising healthcare costs and inefficiencies of cardiovascular disease treatment for both individuals and organizations. Um, to give you a bit broader picture, uh, there are a couple of numbers. Um, so you for sure know that at the age of 24, your risk for cardiovascular disease uh, is around 20%, but by the age of 45, your chances more than double to 50%. It is estimated that in 2035, the number of Americans with CVDs is projected to rise to 131 million. It's 45% of total US population. Uh, there's also a huge indirect cost of cardiovascular disease related to uh, the loss of productivity. Uh, that will reach around uh, 368 billion in 2035. And uh, most Americans get healthcare through their employers. And affordable health insurance is an important uh, thing when deciding whether to take a new job. Our solution and the core product is Virtual Care by Cardicube, that is a web based portal allowing patients to connect with healthcare providers through video calls. But what happens before having a video call? Here is where CardiCube Care Management comes with help. Uh, it's a system to aggregate health history in one place and also optimize treatment by automated conversations using voice AI. So looking at our system, there are a couple of components. Uh, there's the patient portal, there are peripheral devices that you can also link like uh, a smart scale blood pressure monitor um, and provider portal, the place uh, where the provider, the doctor logs and could either look for the data or uh, connect with a given patient. But the part I'd like to discuss as part of today's presentation that we believe is our competitive um, advantage and also the key differentiator and innovation at the same time is care management, a tool to perform clinical follow-ups, symptom check-ins, and preventive care reminders, all automated through voice AI. Um, to show you how that looks, um, you have our members, patients, uh, who may be uh, presented with different uh, symptoms, who may have different needs, that are just you know, a couple of them here as examples. And the very first layer of the contact with their healthcare providers is through voice AI. So this could be a voice first device like Amazon Echo or Google Home. 
uh, or a voice assistant working with our application on a smartphone. So the potential for scalability is really huge. It could be literally any device. Uh, you also have the uh, before mentioned peripheral devices and then the patient portal if there's a need for a visit. Uh, and then as you can see on the right side, you have different types of providers. So in our service part of the company, these could be urgent care providers, family physicians, or cardiologists. How we help. So we basically have different models as we work both with hospitals, physicians, employers. Today, I'd like to talk more about how we help um, primarily healthcare providers. So uh, they're using our software as a so-called SaaS, so software as a service, and then they deploy it to their own patient populations. So as many patients as they want, uh, and they're able to modify the voice AI conversations, either manually or automatically, depending on given patient's uh, needs. Uh, we believe that this uh, helps to reduce unplanned readmissions, lower administrative costs, and give the patients improved clinical outcomes. The technological backbone of this system and the trial I wanted to mention today uh, was done in partnership with Cedar sinai uh, located in Los Angeles, uh, to be exact, their outpatient cardiology clinic. So the aim of this study, of this feasibility study, uh, was to evaluate the implementation of a voice-enabled automated platform for collection of medical data from patients with CVDs, with cardiovascular diseases. Uh, it was the time when we called it CardiCube. The study enrolled 22 individuals uh, utilizing voice-enabled patient registration software implemented on exactly the Amazon Echo. It's the device that you can actually see in front of the gentleman on this photo, just right in front of him. And a web-based electronic health record, so-called EHR system, and study participants verbally answered a set of clinical questions. So uh, we basically took the same sets of questions normally that are asked by a, a nursing practitioner uh, right before the visit or uh, on a phone call uh, as a follow-up call or check-in call. Uh, the primary endpoints was uh, the accuracy of the cardiotube system. So we compared uh, the results gathered by our system to the results gathered by a human being. And secondary endpoints, acceptability by the patients, uh, usability, and technical performance. We wanted to assess the real clinical application. It was the moment when we were trying to think, does it make sense? Getting now uh, to the results. So our system collected 432 uh, data points with a very, very high agreement uh, level between uh, verbally provided data and the corresponding EHR information that was gathered uh, through uh, the system working on a voice-enabled speaker, voice um, AI. And the accuracy was 97.51%. Uh, so the CardioCube was able to automatically generate a summarized medical report, which was instantly available for the doctor in the web-based EHR system. Patients reported CardioCube was easy to use and the applicability of the system was graded excellent by the medical staff. And as you know, while starting with any kind of innovation, you're thinking about the patient as the very core of it, but it is also the medical staff that needs actually to like it because adding another window on the screen could create problems in daily workflows. And so we thought how to make both the physicians and providers lives easier at the same time, uh, giving more care and more attention to patients. Uh, and a single session utilized less than 0.002% um, of available computational uh, resources.
Then our research was published in the International Journal of Medical Informatics. And so we were able to show that CardioCube can collect, index, and document medical data using a voice interface. Uh, now you understand why it's such a critical part in the whole system, because you can make, and yes, indeed, you can connect so many other peripheral devices that give you the numerical data. Uh, but what you were lacking for years was how to really get all the context of this data from patients that you don't see and that are uh, on different remote uh, um, uh, monitoring programs or under current management center programs. So that's actually a way to transform how we take care of chronic patients. Uh, our patient populations also said that it'll be great to use it for um, family care and the whole primary care segment. That's why we also then started to build all the other modules. But the very start and the very basic of this uh, story is actually coming from the uh, cardiovascular field. The uh, market for telehealth is just, you know, right now booming and growing all over the way. Uh, there are more than 1 billion devices providing voice assistant access today. Uh, and as you can see on, on the photo, this could be, as said before, an application working on an Android or iOS uh, phone. Google Home, there are different types of those speakers. Amazon Echo, also different sizes and, and volumes. Uh, and Apple has its uh, Apple HomePod. I'd like to end with uh, telling you what's happening in the US where 11% uh, of consumers using telehealth in 2019 uh, grew to 46% of consumers using telehealth to replace cancer healthcare visits. We also see a huge demand of patients from the RPM, from the remote uh, monitoring um, sector, also asking for many different types of automated solutions uh, to change the way how they contact uh, their physicians. Uh, thank you so much again for inviting me to speak here today, and I'm looking forward to, uh, to your questions.